Hey everybody, it's Brooke with Super Tutor TV and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through a couple of the hardest ACT English questions. Before we get going, I want to remind all of you to subscribe to our channel and if you haven't already, head to supertutortv.com slash subscribe to subscribe to our mailing list and check out the best ACT prep course ever. It's over 50 hours of video content and it's a complete prep course with me in which I share all of my secrets with you that I share with my private students. It's like private tutoring, but without the private tutoring cost. So go check that out and let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do, uh, spoiler alert, these are questions that I took from test 71G. It was given in April of 2013. This is from a released test that the ACT gives to students who take the test. So I'm gonna use just a couple examples here to give you a taste of what really hard ACT questions look like. The first question that I'm going to talk about is a transitions question. And a lot of my students do struggle with transitions questions. So I'm just gonna read this sentence to start. And that's usually how I start with my English questions. We have his 1984 album, Buscando America, is a call for reform. Blades believed this would be possible only if Panama were freed from then dictator Manuel Noriega's oppressive regime. So I can already see that there's an issue with no change. And the issue that I have with no change is there's no glue holding together these two sentences and essentially it's a run-on sentence. If you guys aren't familiar with what a run-on sentence is, it's essentially a sentence in which you've glued what could be two complete independent sentences with a comma. We sometimes call what could be an independent sentence a clause or an independent clause. So we can't bridge an independent clause with an independent clause by throwing a comma in between the two. That is not allowed in English. It's one of the biggest mistakes that students make on this test because most of my students are listening to what their ears think. They're not thinking in terms of what rules apply in the English section. And they miss these questions because they don't spot the run-ons. And that is exactly what F does and that is why F is wrong. If you don't believe me, let's take a look. His album is a call for reform. That is a complete sentence. The album is this, right? So I could put a period right there. And then we have Blades believed this would be possible. So he believed, and then we have this would be possible, right? And then we have an if clause, if Panama, da, 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 da. But again, a complete sentence. We have Blades believed, we have subject verb. No glue in between here. Let's now take a look at G. A lot of my students pick G on this, actually, not F because they hear that F seems to be missing some sort of glue, some sort of transition. So they read G and they like G. So let's take a look at G. His 1984 album, Buscando America, is a call for reform. And then we have comma, however, Blades believed this would be possible only if Panama were freed from then dictator. It sounds beautiful, everybody, but guess what? However is not glue in the way you think it's glue. However is actually an adverb, okay? It's an adverb, and so you cannot use it to glue together what would be two sentences with a comma. If you do use however, the proper way to use however mid-sentence like this is put semicolon however comma. I get into this in a lot more detail in our semicolons video if you happen to be a subscriber to our prep course. But for everybody here, I'm just briefly gonna say however doesn't work because however is an adverb and what you actually need is a conjunction. Conjunctions are wordless like and, but, although, or because words like this. These are conjunctions, these are called coordinating conjunctions, these are subordinating conjunctions, whichever way you dice it, you need a conjunction if you're going to have a comma. And here we only have a comma. Like I said, if we had semicolon comma, that would be fine, but we do not. So to our ears, it sounds fine because it is fine to our ears. But punctuation wise, it is not fine. So now we're down to H and we get to the relative pronoun which. Relative pronouns, they're words like which or that or who. When it comes to which, this specific word, there's a particular rule with commas because which usually introduces what we call non-essential clauses. That means that it's usually removable information versus that introduces clauses that aren't removable. When we have something removable, we generally like to lead out with a comma. So when we have a which clause, we like to have a comma in front of it. Instantly, when I see this which and no comma here, I am very suspect of J. The other problem with this is it says blades believing and this makes this awkward. But when you have which without a comma, that's usually a signal that that's wrong. So I'm gonna get rid of J right now. So which almost always comes after a comma. 
And then the other thing about which is that it usually refers to what comes right before the comma. Occasionally it will refer to an entire idea that's kind of in the clause or phrase before it, but that's not the preferred way to use it. And we really only want to choose that answer choice if nothing else available will work. So let's take a look at which and see if this works because now I've eliminated everything else. Write this off the no comma before the which and the believing, which was weird. So here we're going to read this. His 1984 album is a call for reform, which Blades believed would be possible. So if I say which Blade believes would be possible, that means Blades believed this reform would be possible only if Panama were freed from the dictator. That makes a ton of sense, doesn't it? So again, which refers to what it touches. What it touches here is the word reform. And then you can move the word order around and like reinsert it in the sentence to see if it works. And if it does work, then your relative pronoun is probably the one to go with. So here our answer is H. And again, the reason this is hard is one, you guys, if you're paying attention to your ears, your ears are gonna love F, which is no change, which is a run on. And your ears are also gonna love G because punctuation aside, G works wonderfully and it even has like a transition, quote unquote. But because however is not actually a conjunction, G is incorrect and the right answer is H. Cool? Okay, so next question. Determined to improve, I diligently adhered to every photography rule my parents taught me, such as, colon, da da da, -da use diagonal lines to draw the viewer's gaze to the photo's main subject. So rule number one is never put such as and then put a colon. This is really sloppy and terrible, so don't please ever do that. So I know that A is wrong. Basically, a colon is like, da 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 da, here you go. And such as is kind of like, da 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 da, here you go. So putting both is kind of redundant, essentially. And that's why you can't really use them together. The other rule is the first rule of colons, as I always like to say, is you have to be able to put a period where the colon is and swap it out, and everything up to that point should read as a whole complete sentence. At least for the first part of the sentence, it needs to be a full complete sentence. You could swap that out for a period with everything in front of it, and that should always work with a colon, with a few exceptions, but most of the time that should work. B, let's take a look at B. I diligently adhered to every photography rule my parents taught me, comma, for example, comma, use diagonal lines to draw the viewer's gaze to the photo's main subject. So this sounds better. And I will say, unlike such as, see the for example, how there's not a colon after for example, that would be wrong if there were a colon after for example. So I'm kind of liking B. C, taught me semicolon to use diagonal lines to draw the viewer's gaze to the photo's main subject. Here's the deal. If I say to use diagonal lines, this becomes a fragment. You see? This is a fragment, and I can't put a fragment after a semicolon. A semicolon can only bridge what stands as a complete sentence and what stands as a complete sentence, i.e. an independent clause and an independent clause. There is no other way to use a semicolon except one tiny exception, which I'm not going to get into right now, but generally 90% of the time, 98% of the time, this is the only way we use a semicolon. And this doesn't cut it because this is not a complete sentence after this. And it also is not the weird random exception to the one other time we use semicolons. And then we have D. Every photography rule my parents taught me, da 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 da, colon, no such as. Use diagonal lines to draw the viewer's gaze to the main subject. That works really well, except it's weird that there's this capital U. I'm going to keep reading a little bit. Carefully frame your shot by paying attention to the details that make up the borders of the picture. Remember to position your main subject by using the rule of thirds. And suddenly I have a realization. You know what my realization is? Every photography rule, this sentence is setting up a list of sentences that are all of the rules. Do you see that? And they're all parallel in structure. So the fact that this U is capitalized makes it parallel in structure to all these other sentences. It's not that bad. Hold on, I'm gonna go back to B. Remember how I said B sounded good? I hope you learned something from the first half of this lesson, which is beware of run-on sentences. Because B is a run-on. This is how the ACT is hard, people. For example, I diligently adhere to every photography rule my parents taught me. For example, use. Well, guess what this is? Determined to improve, I adhere to every rule my parents taught me. That's an independent clause, right? That's a complete sentence, essentially. Use diagonal lines to draw the viewer's gaze to the photo's main subject. Guess what that is? It's a complete sentence. You know how? Because this is the imperative voice. Do you guys know the imperative voice? It means it's a command, right? 
It means there's a missing you. There's no subject that we see with our eyes, but there's an implied you. Use diagonal lines. It's like an instruction. So it is also a complete sentence. So we have two independent clauses joined by a series of commas and the words, for example, which is just a transitional prepositional phrase. For is a preposition example, a noun. That's a prepositional transitional phrase. It is not a conjunction. It cannot glue together two independent clauses. And B is a run-on sentence. And the only thing that works is D. Yes, it's a little bit weird and funky that the U is capital. I completely agree with you guys. But a little bit weird and funky, but parallel with everything else in the sentence, that's going to be the right answer on the ACT. The ACT is looking to get you and trip you up with these run-on sentences that sound beautiful, but are highly problematic. So... You can see how I can kind of like go through this and a few pieces of advice for you guys when you get to hard questions. One, whenever you have things that have like colons and semicolons, these are always usually the hard questions on the test because a lot of people don't know how to use colons. So slow down a little bit and make sure you go through every answer choice. And then the other thing is really be careful and look out for those run-ons. If there's one lesson of the day, it's beware of the run-on and don't choose the answer choice that is a run-on sentence. And it's okay to pick something a little bit funky if you know another answer choice is wrong. And that's it for today. I hope you guys liked this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And go check us out at supertutortv.com slash subscribe. Subscribe to our mailing list. We'll keep you updated with everything awesome that supertutortv.com is doing. And I'll see you guys next time on Supertutor TV. If you're taking the ACT student, good luck.